podcast is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to a new podcast, The Paddock and the Pavilion with Stephen Wallace. In each show, Stephen will interview someone connected to the world of horse racing or cricket. Hello everyone, England's International Cricket Summit is now underway and today I'm with Chris Millard, the Managing Director of the Barmy Army. Hello Chris, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be on. Well, thank you for joining me. The last time I saw you was on the Channel 4 when you were being interviewed during the Test Match series by Rishi Pasad. Yes, it was a good um, a good moment for us that to be on Channel 4, the lunch or the tea interval. I forgot which one it was because it was stupid o'clock in the morning, wasn't it? The um, series over there, but it was it was great. It was nice to be on Channel 4 representing the Barmy Army and the England cricket fans. It was a, an absolute privilege. Well, they must have been short of guests. They all, all they got fed up with having Simon Hughes with his table tennis what, bat. On. What are you trying to say? Short of guests? We did a great job. We did. You know, it was, um, we we managed to bring on some junior members as well as myself to talk about what had been going on through COVID and what had been going on throughout the the um, the pandemic. Really, and part of that was a junior membership. We had two juniors on that was really good to show how. We also grow the the game from the young stirs to the old guys that come and travel away with us and go overseas. Right. Well, this morning we're going to talk about the Barmy Army's plans for 2021, uh, the Ashes, its history and the future. Uh, and to start with, how are you and have, have the Barmy Army been back supporting England already this summer? We have, yes. Yes, we, um, we've been... At every game possible, we've we've been allocated a section of tickets for most recently the Edgebaston ODI, which was a fabulous day. For anyone um, who watched that ODI, will have hopefully noticed the Barmy Army there and singing all the songs and in the blue bob, blue wigs for Bob Willis, and it was a really fantastic day. It's so nice to just be back at cricket stadiums playing, but also just getting back to what we love and getting back to helping our members uh, do what they love and care about so much you realize how much you've lost when you've not got it if you like you've you you sat there in your room every day and you're oh I'd love to be back in the stadium supporting the England lads and the England lads said the same thing they're playing in empty stadiums and they they want the Barmy Army back so we can give them that 12th man that they long for when we're not there. Well it does make a difference and I guess Jerusalem was booming out before full play started. Of course yep after the first ball, every cricket day, everywhere we go, Jerusalem will be sung by the Barmy Army. It's um, it's a great song and it represents the game of cricket really well, which is um, why it's become such a great tradition within cricket, but also within the Barmy Army. Well, the last time I heard that myself was at the Mount Monganui test, probably one of the more memorable moments of that test match, the way, uh, <laughs> the way it went for England. Yeah, absolutely. We um, we had a great representation of people over there because it was a new ground, because it was a different destination. That tends to happen a lot. So you find a lot of people that want to tick off new tour grounds, the tourists that are really the diehards that go and do every tour, home and away, wherever they can get to. If there's a new ground, you bet there'll be a lot of people there. And Mount Manganui was no exception. Yeah, it was a lovely ground and I could just walk from my uh, B&B to the ground. So it was a memorable five days uh, at the ground, the, the cricket not quite so memorable. <laughs> it was yeah, for BJ. Say about that, the better. It was for BJ Watlin. Uh, yeah, yeah, very true. Anyway, you must be looking forward to the India Test series um, in August and September. Have the Barmy Army got plenty of tickets for those games? Yes, we have. We've got a great allocation everywhere but Lords, of course, because we don't get an allocation at Lords. Um, it's the only ground in the world that we don't get an allocation, which is, we're, we're absolutely fine with. The MCC do their thing, we do our thing, and they're, they're a little bit different, aren't they? If, if we're completely honest, so we'll, we'll, some of us will still be there and going just as. as fans more than anything else but sadly no, no allocation at Lords but we'll be at every other test we've got a great fantastic allocation at Trent Bridge they've been fantastic with us we'll have some great numbers there same for Headingley the same for Old Trafford and the same for the Oval Well I'm off to Trent Bridge for the first day on the 4th of August um, You'll have to come and join us for Jerusalem I'll have, I'll have to come and say hello and, uh, and, and sing along yeah uh, and as an MCC member myself um have you, are you getting any joy at all with Lords to get some tickets? Or? No, not 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 specifically. Also, we we um we we get it as well. We I'm, I'm a fan of Lords. I've I've been there many times. The the great days that we've had there of the Barmy Army were the World Cup days. So we were there for the semi final and the final because they were ITC events and they weren't run by the MCC. So 
that was a great privilege to be at those events for everyone. And we're very grateful to be allowed in as the Barmy Army. And we, we know how much the players wanted us there. And it was a great moment to share with everyone. However, back to the test matches and back to the way it's done with the MCC, we're, we're absolutely cool with. Um, it's it's fine. The MCC and Lords is, runs it there. We'll, and we do our thing a little bit different and group allocation of tickets is, is impossible to get at Lords anyway. So we'll leave them to it until the day that they agree to let us in, which would be lovely. Well, we wouldn't say no, um, but right now we're, we're cool with it. Right. Well, what's it been like for the Barmy Army though, seriously, over the last 18 months with no tours? How's it affected you financially? It's been very difficult, as you can imagine. It's been incredibly difficult for a, a business that um, provides experiences around the world watching the England team suddenly when you're not allowed to travel anywhere you're not allowed to go to any games at home you're not allowed to uh, do anything it's, it's been very tough and I, I've said this on Channel 4 I've said this many times before but um, we're still very grateful to be able to do what we do and and we are so happy to to run the Barmy Army and do the job that we do our job isn't to to worry and say how difficult times are our job is to plan for the future look forward and provide people with opportunities and experiences of a lifetime in the future and I think the f- key focus for the business through this period has been making sure that we're in a place to offer everyone the best experience better than before when we're allowed to again and, and that goes from the travel packages and taking people away and making sure that we're in the right position to take great numbers to the T20 World Cup in Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Amman, and, and then making sure we're also well positioned for the West Indies tour to make sure it's better and bigger than ever. And then hopefully we'll see what happens with the Ashes, but we're not too hopeful right now. Um, but but they're the ones we're focusing on at the minute, and we've been working really hard on planning for those. And then the, the summer in the UK, make sure that all of our members who have been an unbelievable gift to us throughout this period, for they've all the, the majority of them have stuck with us and we've actually grown the membership through stuff we've been doing online and the work we've been doing um, promoting the game really across social media it's been it's been really really great news that they've all stuck with us and been able to keep the Barmy Army going and, and thriving for the future well, It sounds like you've been busy making plans even though you haven't been able to watch cricket you, you did have one supporter though out in Sri Lanka with um, Rob Lewis or, or Randy yeah. Caddick as he's known mm-hmm. We did, yeah. Randy, he's back now. <laughs> he, um, he he's back, and he's he came to the Edgbaston Test when we um, when we were straight back. So he's back at the first Test of the summer that uh, the Barmy Army had an allocation, and he did a fantastic job representing us overseas. And he got some great traction. I think it was a good feel story that the country needed at the time, and it and it seemed to just blow up. And he's a really good lad as well, Rob. He, he he's really is a man that just loves going to live sport, watching it, and lives for the lives for the life watching sport and hey hats off to him he was able to do it while we were all stuck at home yeah and it was a great touch when your your friend joe root was speaking to him on the telephone as well yeah it was it was great great touch he's um he is a very personable bloke joe and he's he's he, he will he know he knew about randy and he knew what he was doing he he wanted to get in touch with him he he made those steps to do that himself it was no no one at the ECB it was no media but it was Joe himself wanting to get in touch to thank him for that so that just shows you the the character of Joe really he's he's a tremendous man and we're so lucky to have him in charge of the England team just with some listeners at Randy Caddick or, or Rob Lewis he was the uh, the guy that um, during Covid as such got stuck in Sri Lanka didn't he and then couldn't couldn't get home and then he decided to stay out there didn't he he did, yeah. He he landed the day that the tour got cancelled back in 2019. 2019, 2020? I'm, I've lost track of time. We all but have, he, think, yeah. yeah, he he landed the day the tour got cancelled and he, he works in IT and he's got a very remote job anyway. He can work from wherever he is in the world. And he said, well, I think it was a bit of an on-the-whim on decision. But he said, oh, I've saved this money. I'm going travelling for a while. I'm going to stay out here until England next play in Sri Lanka. And they rearranged it albeit behind closed doors, but they played in Sri Lanka and he was there. So he's true to his word. Ten months later, he was watching England up on the fort in Gore. Yes. Yeah, well, good place to watch cricket from. My dad's been there, but he always says that Gore makes uh, Colombo look quite chilly, but uh, I've not been there. So I've been <laughs> yeah, to Colombo, but, uh, again, uh, Sri Lanka, for anyone that hasn't been, is an unbelievable place to tour. It's it's incredible. It's it's one of the islands that has everything. It's very diverse. You can do a lot, and it's um, very reasonably priced as well. So the next time England are out there, make sure you, you get on that tra- get on that tour because it's a very popular one as well. 
Yeah, they're very friendly out there as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, moving on to the Ashes, uh, are there any plans at the moment for supporters going to the Ashes, which starts in December? Right now, the borders remain closed for Australia, for everyone, I think, but New Zealand and even in Sydney and a few other states, they've got proper lockdowns again. So the vaccine rollout has been nothing like the one in the UK, which is very, very frustrating. Um, we remain reasonably hopeful that there'll be some form of travel corridor or, or a solution of some form in the in the next few months. There's still a fair way to go till December. However, tickets have been on sale for a couple of weeks to expats and anyone living in Australia. So we've got some reasonably good numbers already going for the Barmy Army expats that are out there. They're obviously, they're not into the thousands, tens of thousands that we normally take, but they'll um, they'll do a good flag waving exercise should the worst happen and we're not able to travel. So that there'll still be a, a Joe Rooks Barmy Army out there, even if we aren't, we're not allowed to go from the UK, which would be very unfortunate because I know a lot of people have been saving and hanging their hat on this one for quite a long time as the real celebration, the end of COVID. But let's wait and see. I've, I've still got my fingers crossed, but um, I must say we, we are telling people to, to keep an eye on the West Indies as well now if they're wanting a trip abroad in the next 12 months. So have you got good links with um, expat to organisations in Australia to get more of them than ever uh, um, for this tour? Yeah, we, we, we do. We've got our support clubs over there. We've got the Perth Barmy Army. We've got the Sydney Barmy Army. We've got the Melbourne Barmy Army, the Adelaide Barmy Army and the Brisbane Barmy Army. So we've got all five of the major states have a representative supporters group over there, all run by very brilliant Barmy Army members that have been through through it with us all for a long time now. And they're promoting the cause over there in their local area for us. And of course, the power of social media these days, we've got a very strong presence of, of Australian followers across all platforms. And we do do a lot of um, targeted messaging to make sure they're aware of your country needs you almost. Joe Root needs you. Make sure you get in the stadium supporting him next um, next winter. Yeah, because it must be the your biggest income stream for a tour, the Australian trip. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's massive. It's It really is a, a huge um, beast when, when you think there's... On the last tour, there was it was estimated by a Tourism Australia there was thirty to forty thousand overseas England fans in Melbourne and Sydney alone. Um, you realise the magnitude of that, and a lot of them are the Barmy Army, and they do get branded the Barmy Army as well. So, um, which is great news, also bad news at times, but it's it's mainly great news that we have such a, an amazing presence over there. Um, but but of course, when that's not allowed to happen, you realise the the hole it leaves. But we're um, we're planning for other things, and we're working hard to make sure that we're we're in it. We're still in a decent position come the end of the Ashes. Well, fingers crossed, some things get changed ahead of ahead of the tour. But moving back a bit about your own personal cricket background, uh, is that what, what's? I know you you're a boyhood friend of of Joe Root, but did you used to play yourself? Is it your family, or how did you get involved in the game? I, I well, so I've I've always played local cricket and. And football, I, I still play now. Play for I'm the vice captain of our first team, Parkhead Cricket Club, which is a team in Sheffield. Um, we we um, play in the South Yorkshire League, so I play in the same infrastructure of Joe's club, Sheffield Collegiate. I've always played against him, um, him and Billy growing up, and know the family really well as well. Matt Root's now part of the Barmy Army as well. Joe's father, which is fantastic. But we, um, yeah, we go back to being kids and living probably five minutes away from each other and playing sport against each other. And, and uh, he's gone his way and I've, I've gone my way. And it seems to have taken very similar paths to where I'm able to support him around the world, which is unbelievable. I'm ter- terribly um, grateful for, for that opportunity. So he must be a great asset now to the Barmy Army with your connection with Joe. It, he is. Yeah, he is. But I'm, we're very aware that he has a job to do for the ECB and he has, he has to be professional and he, he can't treat us better than he treats other supporters and other supporters group. So I, re- I respect his role and how great it is and that the magnitude of what he has to do is, is incredible. And I would never try and look, completely lean on a personal relationship to improve the Barmy Army circumstances. Everything he's done has beca- been because he loves the Barmy Army and what we do. Having us on his back wasn't to do with our friendship. It was to do with he was gutted that we weren't able to travel overseas. And if I wasn't in charge of the Barmy Army, he would have still done that. So he's just a great guy. Well, he certainly comes over well on the, on the television and, and 
as a, an ambassador for the uh, the England team. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And yourself, and yourself, how did you finish up becoming the managing director of the Barmy Army? Yeah, so it, it was um, it, it was through Matt Root, really. Joe's dad. He he was getting involved with the, the business a little bit, and he was helping Paul and the, the leadership team at the time. And I, I came on as a work experience back in 2014, 15 time, and obviously enjoyed it. How can you not? And then I, I finished university and then went straight into a, a full-time job with the Barmy Army and worked my way up over the years and here I am today. And the other thing I just wanted to go back even further is to the history of the Barmy Army. Um, how did it all start? I know it's the 1994-5 Michael Atherton tour of Australia, but how did it all start? So there was three three fellas that went travelling for to Australia for a certain period of time. That's Paul Burnham, who's still the chairman of the company. Dave Peacock, who is still involved with the Australia side of the business, and Gareth Evans, who isn't involved anymore, but he lives out in New Zealand. They were they were all travelling and they were they were singing songs on the hill at Adelaide and England were getting thrashed. And the sun was hot, but they were still in the sun getting sunburnt. And the Australian media and the Australians couldn't work out why there was this massive group of guys still up there on day four, day five, singing songs for a terrible England side um, when they were losing and, and the, the Aussies were even going home it was that much of a drubbing and they decided to brand them the Barmy Army in the media so Paul, Gareth and Dave then went on to trademark the Barmy Army the name um, in Australia originally but then worldwide as well so the, the worldwide trademark of Barmy Army and put it on some t-shirts they put it on some t-shirts went to the remaining tests and figured out they sold thousands and thousands of Atherton's Barmy Army t-shirts and it was it was just like a bit of a, a wildfire moment where things just started to catch on and people loved the Barmy Army and everything that it stood for since then great work Paul's done to to implement a membership structure and implement a, a travel operation as well as well as the merchandise to, to turn it into a business has been absolutely fantastic and to be able to offer a service to so many England cricket fans that are like-minded to, to us guys that run it and to the guys that set it up originally. So there's plenty of um, men and women that love just touring with the England cricket team, watching us everywhere we go. And that starts from those origins back in 94, 95. And it's just been a very nice continual growth period as a business, but also as a, as a brand. And people are now aware of what we do and why we do it, the code and conduct, the ethics of how we try and support and what's right and what's wrong. And that's really something that's caught up, caught the imagination of the public and people want to be involved with. And so it was an Australian who actually uh, created the actual name of the Barmy Army. No, 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 sorry. It, it, Dave Peacock is just, is, is an Englishman. They're all, all three of them are English. Um, and they're all mates and, and he just gets involved with the Australia tour now because he still likes the Australia side of the business. So that the only one that's managed to let it go has been Gareth. So Gareth's managed to move away overseas, but Paul and Dave still love it and still are, are very much part of the organisation, but um, but in a very very much laid back role. No, I thought that the, the actual name of the Barmy Army, didn't, the, you said the Australians called it a, a, a sort of Barmy Army. Is that how the name actually came about? It was the Australian media more than anything. So it was the Australian media saying, oh, the Barmy Army. Barmy because they're losing and they're still there. Army because there's so many of them. But of course, the, the Barmy Army, the name does start in football in the 80s. And it, I, th- I guess it's just a, w- a well-known phrase for groups of England England sports fans. And that's probably where they've picked up as well. Well, it's certainly well-known now. How many members have you got? So we've got 4,100 as of this week so that they're first class members we've got 4,100 that um, pay an annual 30 30 pound subscription that gets them access to England tickets access to advice play for Barmy Army Cricket Club and a whole bunch of discounts in the UK and overseas and then we've got 35,000 subscribers so they're free members that just get the newsletter and the updates from us ahead of any major announcements or big tours and then we've got just over half a million across the four platforms of social media now, which has been a massive um, growth area for the business and for the brand. And another, another um, thing that you wouldn't have thought of back in 94, 95, where we'd be so big now, but it, it's something that we really hold dearly. Yeah. It's come a long way from selling a few t-shirts, isn't it? 94. Absolutely. It's brilliant. It's just been a really nice gradual growth of the business and I can't wait for the next 25 years. And the age group of the uh, members, uh, 
is it a wide range range in age group and, and sexes as well it is yeah it, it, it always surprises people the demographic of the barmy army because i think the 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 first instinct gut reaction that people have to the barmy army is that it's going to be a bunch of um white blokes in the 40s to 50s and it's just simply not the case we have we have a, a lot of ladies on the database but we have a lot of people of different ethnicities on there as well that really appreciate what the barmy army stands for and what the barmy army is about and and the way we operate we're really really keen on telling everyone about our hoggies rules slash code of conduct that is all about how you should operate as a as an england barmy army member and a sports fan around the world and we believe that's the the blueprint for how people should should try and support when they go to a live sporting event and you also raise a lot of money for charity as well don't you on all tours yeah yeah absolutely we've raised over half a million pounds over the 25 years for charity which which is wonderful and that's something that we're always keen to do and this year for the ashes and for the west indies we'll be partnering with the Ruth strauss foundation which will be absolutely brilliant because of course everyone knows the, the story about Ruth and, and Andrew Strauss and ha- how that all happened and we just want to do our bit as the Barmy Army for such a legend and such a hero for over so many years uh, Sir Andrew Strauss was to the Barmy Army we want to repay that and w- we will be raise, hopefully raising a lot of money over the next 12 to 18 months for the charity. So you'll start singing some of the Andrew Strauss songs again then? Absolutely he's got one of the best one of the best ever and what are the different challenges when you go to, uh, since sort of 94, 95, you've got all, you must have been to all the different test playing countries. What are the challenges that each of them offer? The, the, the biggest challenge is how different they all are. So, so the, the problems that you face in Australia are completely different to the problems that you'd face in India and the West Indies. Um, as you will not be surprised to hear, the biggest problem in the West Indies and India is logistics, trying to get stuff around India such a, a crazy country but West Indies even more so trying to get um, stuff from island to island and anything from people to merchandise to equipment it's really difficult to get island to island because they're all governed differently and there's different laws about entry and different laws about what you can and can't do so that's um, that's the West Indies but then you've got completely different problems in Australia and the biggest I guess the most difficult challenges in Australia is how big it is and how big the scale of the operation is and being able to deal with that needs a massive team and we go from a a team of of eight people in the UK that work on the business day to day to a team of 25 to 30 people for an Ashes tour. And have you been to many of the, the different countries yourself? Yeah, I've I've actually been to everywhere but New Zealand, sadly, because I've just every time there's been three tours to New Zealand since I've been with the business and every time it's happened there's been something come up that I can't do. But I've been everywhere but New Zealand and, and wow, I've, I'm so lucky to and so grateful for the opportunity to do that because I, I couldn't recommend it highly enough to anyone that likes cricket and likes going abroad. <laughs> no, I certainly recommend New Zealand. It's a great place to uh, to go to. And so I, don't I, suppose, I don't suppose you'll be able to go to Pakistan later this year. Have we are hopeful. No, we, we are hopeful to go to Pakistan. Well, I, I spoke to Wazim Khan, the CEO of PCB, a couple of months ago, and he was really keen to get us there. I'm really hopeful that we could have a presence there. It might not be there for the T20s because that might just be a bit too soon with everything that's going on, which is next year. But however, in late 2022, there is a test tour there as well which is what we've got our eye on. We'd love to take people over there. We've got, like I said before, the Barmy Army is full of people that want to go to everywhere and want to see the see the sites the world has to offer. And if we ran a tour to Pakistan for a, a test series, you can guarantee if allowed, there'd be a, a decent Barmy Army presence there. Well, it'd be great to see England back playing again in Pakistan. Absolutely. Uh, which, Absolutely. Which, as, as you say, they will be doing in, a, I think, a T20 series as a warm-up to the the uh, yeah. T20 World Cup later this year, won't they? Yeah, they will. You've actually answered this question really before, but I just wanted to raise it because I'm sure some people will think this. I, I, having heard you speak, I can see that you're uh, dealing with this sort of thing anyway all the time. But how, how do you respond when some people say that it's a load of young louts singing annoying songs at a cricket match? Well, the first thing I'd say is that that has really gone away in the last 
I guess four or five years that I think people are getting it more and more now and people are understanding. And I wouldn't, if people say that there's, there's probably one person that's still trying to say that and that's Jonathan Liu, the Telegraph journalist. So the, uh, sorry, I don't think he's with Telegraph, I forgot who he's with, but he's the only one that really doesn't get it. And that's just because he's never, um, never taken the time to come into the Barmy army and see what it's about. And I, I don't, I don't get offended when people say that because it's it's very simply that they just don't understand the Barmy Army. They don't know what it's about because they haven't taken the time to learn or to come to a, a fixture with us to experience that. And and like I said before, with the name the Barmy Army, people are going to assume things and people do assume things and, and that's absolutely fair enough. But if someone does say that, I say, okay, no problem. Would you like to come for a day at the cricket with us and sit next to us and see what we're all about? And as soon as they do that, they would realise what the Barmy Army really stands for. And if they weren't willing to do that, then, well, I guess it's probably clickbait, isn't it? Well, you're never going to please everyone. And the players on both both sides um, actually like having the Barmy Army there, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. Like we, we um, like the the class uh, prime example of this is the class clown David Warner, who is public enemy number one, is um, is actually a really big. Um, fan of the Barmy Army and what we do and we we love to hate him if you like but he comes after us on social media for a bit of banter then we go back at him but it's all in good faith it's all good spirited and it's all done in the right way and that's something that we're really keen to do it's never we, we try and never step over the mark okay there's potentially things in the past that might have been considered to be a little bit over the mark or considered to be a little bit left of of where they should have been however we are we are changing that. We are looking to try and make sure that Hoggy's rules, the code of conduct that the Barmy Army membership stands for, is adhered to by absolutely everyone. And that's from social media to the members in the stands. Well, thanks for answering that. And also, you've lost your trumpeter as well. Billy Cooper's not there. Have you got a new trumpeter? We yeah, we have. We've uh, he's been at all the recent um, England games, and he's been very well received and been got quite a lot of uh, media presence from people um seeing him there and he's called simon finch finchy he's he's brilliant he's very talented trumpeter he's a bit more jazzy poppy than billy billy was a bit more classical but he's um he's doing a fantastic job so far and i think he's really enjoying the role he's um he's headlined glastonbury a couple of times but he says playing for jerusalem for the barmy army is a, a little bit more um nerve-wracking <laughs> oh that's good to hear and uh... And what about the future for the Barmy Army? Obviously, increasing the membership and actually getting out to watch an overseas tour will be something something different, won't it? Yeah, absolutely. I think the one, the one thing that we're really focusing on now is that membership and is that growing that first class paid membership and make sure that everyone appreciates the value that we offer. I mean, thirty pound a year isn't a lot of money in today's currency, and, and what we're trying to offer is a product that's well worth that for any cricket fan. It doesn't matter if you're a an MCC member or a or a T twenty hundred lover, we we have something for everyone on the membership, and it's for cricket fans more than anything. And you don't have to be the an absolute Barmy Army avid fan to get value out of it. So you get discount off New Balance. You can get tickets anywhere in the UK, all on one portal, except for Lords. Um, and and it's just an, an offer for cricket fans that that want to go and watch England cricket in the UK. And we have that. We we like to think we've got the best value membership for them and that, that's really key thing for the Barmy Army and then secondly overseas tours like I said before we, we've still got our things and toes crossed for the ashes but we're um, every day that slips by is another day not not going the right way for us with regards to that tour however with the T20 World Cup being moved to the UAE wow that's fantastic that's really exciting and then off the back of that you've also got a West Indies tour three test West Indies tour which is going to be absolutely huge yeah, fingers crossed for the West Indies. That is in March 2022. So where are the test matches being played for that series? There's three now, I think, isn't there? That they're actually yet to um they're actually yet to be announced. So there's the, the dates have been announced. Um however they're um yet to announce the actual locations for those fixtures. I would expect one will be in Barbados. It's normally a I think you can hang your hat maybe. on Barbados and Antigua, but I can't say I can't be um, be saying anymore because if I'm wrong, I'll get shouted at. <laughs> and um, how do people become members of the Barmy Army? Since it's thirty pound, is it just going on the website? Yeah, absolutely. It's just barmyarmy.com, and then it's membership, first class membership, and you can just sign up. You can sign up for a year annually, rolling, or you can just sign up for a one off year. And 
you'll ho- you'll hopefully if you do go on that if you do go to sign up for the Barmy Army you'll see the value and the membership that we offer and it'd be an absolute honour to represent you Right Chris um, you're, you're also going to be at the test matches this summer what's your prediction for the England India series? I'm confident actually I, they're a very good side I'm aware they're a very good side I think we'll probably win um, 3-1 three, three I'm going to go with we're going we're to lose a test no. <laughs> well, the, last two, the last two tours they've had over here they've not done very well but they are a very good side they are a very good side and it's probably the strongest India side that have come over for probably the uh, best part of since Sachin's days really so I think we need to um, we need to be on our a game, but I think the the ODI recent series with the lads showed how much strength and depth we've got, and there's guys absolutely chomping in a bit to get that opportunity in an England shirt. And and if they get that, and if if you look at the likes of James Vince, who's just looked unbelievable in that edge bastard and ODI, he if he gets an odd or someone of David Milan, or you look at the strength we've got, wow, it's exciting to see this England Test team ahead of a really busy schedule. Let, let's hope they they do it and beat Vera and the boys. Oh, that'll be nice to see, but it should be some fantastic cricket. And uh, and as for James Vince, I'm uh, a bit of a tragic for the Perth test because I've seen, I won't be seeing this one, obviously, I've seen the last five defeats. And of course, I saw probably uh, James's uh, best test innings until he got bowled by a uh, superb ball by Mitchell Stark. It was very, it was a very good knock, wasn't it? It was very unfortunate he didn't convert, but it was, um, it was fantastic. And he, he has, he does, he's got it in him, hasn't he? He's got it in him. Yeah, he is one of those infuriating players. If you like James Vince, uh, some people say, oh, well, he just nicks off and things like that. But he is a lovely player to watch and I'd like to see him do well myself for the England side. Yeah, likewise. And me. Anyway, exciting times ahead for the Barmy Army. I'll li- listen out for you on August the 4th, on Wednesday, when the Test Match Series begins against India, when Jerusalem will be booming out uh, in, in the East Midlands. And thank you very much for joining me on the Paddock and the Pavilion. Anytime. It was a pleasure to be on the podcast and and, um, I look forward to seeing you at Trent Bridge. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you for listening to The Paddock and the Pavilion. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook and now on Instagram at The Pad and Pav. Don't forget, if you like the show, please do leave us a rating and review. Sports Social Podcast Network. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to Chumbacasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.